Hi everybody, welcome to another class of Law of Torts. Today in this video we shall learn about Assault, Battery and Mayhem. All these three are crimes also. A little bit tricky but very easy. Assault Definition Assault is the unlawful laying of hands on another or an attempt to do a corporal hurt to another coupled with present ability and intention to do the act. For example, A advances B in a threatening manner to use force upon him. Here A commits assault. Example 2, X in a heated argument attempts to strike Y but stops it at the neck of the moment. Here, X commits an assault. So, what is assault? An assault is the unlawful laying of hands on another or an attempt to do a corporal hurt to another coupled with present ability and intention to do the act. From the definition, let's see what are the essentials to constitute assault. Number one. There must be some gesture or preparation to constitute the threat of force. Mere verbal threat is not assault. So, mere verbal threat, vakuval gondula threat is not assault. There must be some gesture, or there must be some preparation to constitute the threat of force. Number two, such gesture or preparation must cause a reasonable fear of violence. That is, in assault, a person is in fear of violence. The plaintiff is in fear of violence. Number three, the person committing the assault must have the present ability and intention to cause harm. The person committing that it means the wrongdoer must have the present ability and the intention to cause harm for example a child cannot be a guilty of assault because a child has no present ability the child may have the intention but a child has no present ability to commit assault and hence a child cannot be guilty of assault it is a general rule Depending upon the circumstances, this condition may change. Fourth essential, the intention need not be actual. If reasonable fear or injury or violence is caused in the mind of the plaintiff, it is sufficient to constitute the tort of assault. For example, A points an empty gun towards B. Now if A knows that the gun is not loaded, but B does not know it. Here A commits the tort of assault. Why? Because he created a reasonable fear or violence in the mind of B. Here A doesn't have any actual intention to kill B. But he created, his intention is not actual, but he created some reasonable fear in the mind of B. Hence he committed the tort of assault. Now let's discuss two case laws for assault. Number one, Stephens versus Myers. In this case, Stephens was the plaintiff and he was the chairman of a meeting. By a resolution of the meeting, Myers was ordered to go out. Myers got angry and shouted that he would pull the chairman with clenched fist. So he showed some gesture over there. Okay. But Myers was stopped by the church warden standing nearby. It was held that Myers was liable for damages. Second case law, Morris versus Marsden. In this case, Morris was assaulted by a lunatic called Marsden. It was proved that Marsden knew the nature and quality of his tortuous act and he was held liable for damages. So, here Marsden had the present ability. That means while doing the tortuous act, he was aware of the consequences and he had the present ability. 
so he was held liable for damages even though he was a lunatic now let's see what is battery battery is the direct intentional application of force on the body of another individual without his consent or lawful justification what is battery it is the direct intentional application of force to the body of another individual without his consent or lawful justification in ipc battery is known as what criminal force it is dealt under section 350 of the ipc now let's see what are the things included under battery battery includes touching a person in a rude and angry manner the force of touching may be even very slight number 3 any blow whether inflicted with hand weapon or any other mechanism constitutes battery any blow whether inflicted with hand weapon or any other mechanism constitutes battery there is no battery if there is no act by the defendant there is some act by the defendant is necessary to constitute battery mere passive obstruction is not the use of force and hence mere passive obstruction is not battery things included under battery include spitting in the face of a person throwing over a chair or carriage in which another person is sitting throwing water over a person striking a horse so that it bolts and throws its rider taking a person by the collar causing another to be medically examined against his will firing a gun carelessly and hitting another all these amounts to battery let's discuss two case laws for battery also number 1 hust versus picture theaters in this case the manager of a theater forcibly knocked out a spectator from the theater under the mistaken belief that the spectator had not paid for his seat the court held that the spectator was entitled to recover compensation from the manager under the tort of battery second case kadar versus k alagasami in this case A police officer put handcuffs and chained an under trial to a window in the hospital during his medical treatment. It was held that the police officer was liable for battery. Now, defense to an action of assault and battery, there are eight defenses available against an action of assault and battery. Number one, self defense. any assault or battery committed in the course of self defense is not a tort but two conditions must be fulfilled number 1 self defense was the only remedy available to such person number 2 the force used must be proportionate as to prevent the harm to be inflicted what are the two conditions must be fulfilled to invoke the defense of self defense the self defense was the only remedy available to such person and the force used must be proportionate as to prevent the harm to be inflicted for example hitting a man with a small stick must not be the reason for cutting him with a sword oral oru cheriya vadi kondu radi koduthu adinte defense alla adehathe oru vaalu kondu vettikolluva annalladhu so the force must be proportionate number 2 defense of one's property a person can use reasonable force to defend his immovable properties this does not amount to assault or battery number 3 to prevent a forcible entry or seizure of chattels the lawful owner of a property can prevent others from making a forcible entry or from making the forcible seizure of the goods so if the lawful owner exercised the reasonable force it does not amount to assault and battery number 4 exercise of parental or quasi parental authority parents have the right to use reasonable force to correct their children 
Similarly, a teacher can also use a reasonable force to correct the pupil. These two actions does not amount to assault or battery. But a husband has no corresponding power over his wife. Number five, voluntary non-fit injuria. I already did a 15 minutes video in this topic. You can refer that one. Number six, preservation of public peace. For preserving public peace, a person can use reasonable force which does not amount to assault or battery. For example, a person fighting in the street or disturbing a public workshop can be removed from such place by using a reasonable force. Number seven, legal process. In serving warrant of arrest, search warrant, etc., a person can use reasonable force for its execution. Number eight, inevitable accident. Inevitable accident means unavoidable accidents. Due to inevitable or unavoidable accident, a person may cause harm to another but in order to invoke this defense, the person causing the harm must have taken reasonable care and caution and must not be negligent. In short, what are the defense available to an action of assault and battery? Self-defense, defense of one's property to prevent a forcible entry or seizure of chattels, exercise of parental or quasi-parental authority, warranty, non-fit injuria, preservation of public peace, legal process, and inevitable accident. Now, mayhem. It is the most serious injury next to death. If a man is deprived of a fighting limb, for example, hands, leg, finger, or teeth, it is called mayhem. An action can be maintained against such a tort. So what is mayhem? It is the most serious injury next to death. Killing of a human being by another human being is homicide. And it is considered as the greatest injury that one can inflict on another, isn't it? So what is mayhem? Mayhem is the most serious injury next to death. Death initiation, if a man is deprived of a fighting limb, for example, hands, leg, finger, or teeth, it is called mayhem. So, deprivation, activity, mayhem. If a man is deprived of Hands, leg, finger or teeth, it is called what? Mayhem. And an action can be maintained against such tort. Conclusion. Assault, battery and mayhem are actionable without proof of actual damage as they violate the right of a person. These three torts, they violate the right of a person and hence they are actionable without the proof of actual damage. And all these thoughts are crimes also.